Hi there. Uh, I just came home from killing four beef on a farm and I need to sharpen some knives. And I thought that would be a good opportunity to uh, answer a question I get quite often. How do you keep your knives sharp? So I'm going to show you how I sharpen my knives, and uh, which doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. That's just how I do it, and that's how I keep my knives sharp. Uh, I'm going to show you what stone I'm going to use and how I do that. Uh, above all stones, and I only use stones, I don't use a machine to sharpen knives. Here we are in my workshop down in the basement of our house. And what I like is a wet stone. Uh, brands don't matter. This happens to be a, an edge logic, but like I said, brands don't matter. What I like though is fine stones. This one happens to be a 1000 grit and the 400 grit which I don't use, I only use the 1000 grit. I want a, a fine stone and put a little bit of water on it. My knives are all victory knives from New Zealand and uh, after over 50 years in the meat trade I can say these are the best knives money can buy and I exclusively use them at the shop to cut up meat and to kill animals on the farm. These are my butcher knife, uh, my farm slaughter knives in here, they're all in here and I roll them all up like that. So they, they are protected, they're always put as a knife, then a roll again and a knife and so they never touch each other and they keep a really sharp edge like that. But like I said I, I used these ones this morning to kill this four beef and now it's time to sharpen them and without further ado I'm going to show you how I do it. Oh, I am set up and ready to go. I make that a little wet that has been soaked. You have to soak a wet stone in water till it fills itself up with water and then after I just have that little dish with water here and ever so often make it wet again. So I don't like uh, a steep angle on my knives. Uh, I like 20, 25 degree angle like that. And so this is my, my skinning knife. And so it's pretty blunt right now yeah, after skinning four beef. And what I do I just I use the whole length of the stone because if you don't a lot of them they just go in the middle your stone starts to to warp here and then you end up with high walls here and, and every time you bang into it, it it actually gets blunt, not sharp. So I use the entire stone, that's why it is. I'm just going to 25 degree angle like that, going to run it along a bit like this. Always make sure to use the ends of the stone too, not only the middle. And then turn it around and do the same here. And just, like I said, that's my way of doing it. There is many different ways to keep a knife sharp. And I like sharp knives. I will throw a knife away if you can't keep it such, because a sharp knife makes the job so much easier. Also a sharp knife is a safe knife. Whenever I cut myself or I see other butchers cutting themselves, they always do it with a blunt knife, because blunt knives don't cut and you apply force to it because it doesn't cut and you slip and then you cut yourself or stick yourself somewhere in the groin with it. So. We're almost there. You can feel when the knife starts getting sharp. You say it doesn't slip. Usually it just slips over. If I take a blunt knife, it just slips over. I don't know if you can hear that if I'm quiet for a second. You see, you can hear nothing. But here you can hear it actually that the, the knife tries to grab the stone. See? What happens when you sharpen a knife? Little burrs build up. Metal gets shaved off basically and, and they attach themselves here. And if you go you can feel it. I already can feel there's a little burr here. And that makes the knife sharpen. And uh, after we're done with it, that burr has to come off. But well, anyway, I find it is important to always remain the same. So don't roll the knife as you go along, you have to keep a stiff wrist. 
it has to be stiff so it's always and then I go a couple of times like that uh, you can do it like that or like that and do a little bit practice but I always keep the 25 degree angle and just slide it along I don't put too much pressure on it just slide it along like this and we're almost there Really it doesn't take much. I, I never let my knives go really blunt. I, I, that would drive me nuts working with a dull, dull, dull knife. So mine don't go really dull. So I basically what I do I just recondition the edge again. And we're there. We're almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. A little bit more water. One of the reasons I like a water stone versus an oil stone is the shavings I leave here, the, the metal that is on here, it washes off. An oil knot, it, it actually sinks in the stone and eventually you will have to clean the stone. And here we just wash the stone off or apply a few drops of water. Yeah, then you can see it washes right off. So just like this. Yeah, that's good. Then when that's done, I clean it a bit. And then I take a steel like this. Uh, I like the polish kind. I don't like the, the rough ones, that really rough. These are all polished. I like them real fine. I like that. This happens to be from Switzerland, my home country or former home country. Today home is my Canada. This happens to be an Isler and I still believe they make one of the best steels there is. So polish and then I just drag the knife along here. It doesn't matter, I, I like to do it this way, some, some do it that way, yeah, or this way, I do it this way, and sometimes the other way too, but I make sure it's equal strokes, if I make 10 strokes here, I make 10 strokes on the other side, and you see how I go slow, and just gently, I don't apply any pressure, it's just the sheer weight from the knife. Uh, and that is razor sharp. I will show you. I have barely any hair left on my arm. But I just... But the, it just comes off. That's one razor sharp knife. Eh? Could be a little bit more down here. Yeah, I, I always try the entire length because that's a skinning knife. You you want that the whole thing has to cut. It's not like a, a skin opening knife or so where, where it doesn't matter so much if the back doesn't cut as long as the front is good because you you stick the knife in the skin and then slip it open like that. But this uh, skinning knife and your skin, it, the entire length cuts down. So, has to be razor sharp. Like I mentioned before, I really despise anything that is not razor sharp to work with. Look at that, how the hair just jumps off. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. It just jumps off. That's razor sharp. That's a razor sharp knife. So that's how I do it. That's how I sharpen all my knives and nothing else. There's no magic to it. Other than here too on the stone, you know, you do 10 strokes this way, you, you should do 10 strokes this way. Other people say it's different, that's not necessary, but I think it's necessary that the knife uh, is used up equally on both sides. Otherwise you end up with one steeper side and one less steep side. So that's what I do. Uh, and one thing about sharpening knives, this is a very fine edge on this knife. It's like a razor blade now, very fine, and eventually it will wear down. And then I do again what I did, what I just showed you now. But one thing, I think I see that a lot, and I take 
this knife and I turn it around for a purpose. They sharpen knives like this when, when they, you, you know, knives need to be reconditioned. This, this won't cut now. I can't kill four beef with this and never recondition. So I, I, I work and then after a while I feel it, it gets a little bit, I recondition it just like this. No pressure, nothing, just slide it from the, all the way from the back to the front, across the steel. And one thing I sometimes see butchers do, and they do that so every 10 seconds. And that will show you that the knife they use doesn't cut, even if they recondition it. It goes something like this. What this does actually, it bluntens the knife. It doesn't make it sharp, it bluntens the knife. Because, like I explained, the edge is, is very, very fine. So every time, when I turn it around, I don't want to do this with this good knife, you hit it, what happens? You bend it over. Okay? Then you hit it on the other side and you bend it on the other side. And eventually your knife will be blunt. If you do that all day long, then you do a cut or two. Yeah, do a cut or two. And it, it, it's fine for a cut or two and then you do it again. So always just gently like this. Yeah. This is a very fine, fine edge and it's very, very quickly it's ruined. I mean, sometimes uh, a couple of days ago I, I skinned a cow and I, fr on the front and the neck there it was on the floor and I, I skinned and hit the rock. Yeah. It was blunt. You could, you could feel it. Yeah, that, uh, you can feel every uneven thing and it has to be even smooth. So it, imagine what happens when you bang a knife on your steel. And it's not good for the steel either, because the steel too has to be smooth. And so, even during the I will sharpen the other knives all too, even during the, during the sharpening process, or reconditioning process. I will do that and then, if I'm out in the field or even here, I take a towel quick to get rid of all the residue. Because if, if you go with a knife along the steel, you leave re uh, steel residue from the knife on here too. And if there is too much on it, it actually will have the opposite effect. In the rather than recondition the knife edge, it will blunten the, the knife. Because steel and steel from the same thing it doesn't work. The same here on the stone. So now I'm going to go and sharpen all the other knives that still need to be sharpened. And, uh, you know, hope it helps you a little bit and you learn something. And... Uh, you know, and uh, keep your knives sharpened. Have a great day.